We've been through the theory, and now we're clear to start what I bet you've been looking forward to the most, diving into the how of unlocking your business's potential by mastering Facebook marketing. Now the first step is installing the Facebook Pixel. This video is going to be fairly long, but we're going to go over everything that's really essential. You need to make sure that this is done right, so that you can be sure that the data you get back is absolutely correct, because the right data means easy optimizations. So you might start by asking what the Facebook Pixel actually is, aside from being a must for any successful online marketing practices. Well, the Pixel is a small piece of code provided by Facebook that keeps track of how users interact with your site. When someone visits your site and takes an action, the Pixel is triggered and fires the report over to your data bank. Now, having the Pixel running on your site will mean that you're able to effectively measure your advertising by understanding exactly how people interact with your site. You'll be able to, firstly, make sure that your ads are being viewed by the right people, secondly, build advertising audiences, and finally, thirdly, make the most of the full host of Facebook advertising tools. I'd strongly recommend using Google Chrome in order to do this, so that you can make the most of the Facebook Pixel Helper extension that I'm going to go into a little later on in the video. Also, for all of this, you'll need access to your site's code. So, we'll start by going into the Pixels tab in Ads Manager. Then, click Set up a Pixel. After that, you're going to see three options for how to set the Pixel up, including the Use an Integration or Tag Manager, manually install the code, or email instructions to a developer. In this example, we're going to show you the manual option. So click on that. Installation is really simple. All you need to do is to place the pixel code between the head tags in the headers of your website. Then, you'll need to paste the code at the bottom of the header section, just above the closing head tag. Lastly, you'll want to check to see that your pixel's working correctly. Give the code up to 20 minutes to update, then wait for the task 4, send test traffic to your pixel to change its status. If your status says active, you're all set. Now, this is quite technical. It might be an idea to send this over to your web developer, who will make sure that everything is installed for you. Alternatively, if your website is running on WordPress, all you need is the Facebook Conversion Pixel plugin. You've got a couple of options when it comes to precisely where you want to place the pixel. Either you can choose to include it on every page that corresponds to an action you want a user to take, so for example whenever they view their basket or complete a purchase, or you can place it in your website's template header, meaning that it will automatically be included on every page. Now going back to the pixel setup process, once you have your pixel ready, click continue. Here you'll be given the option to pick your events. Events are specific actions that users take that trigger your site's pixel. They're also useful because they basically form the data that explains the customer journey that we went over in section 2.5. Now through them, you can tell where people got up to in the customer journey and return data that will help optimise your campaigns a little later on down the line. You see, this is why we suggested having the pixel installed in your website heading, so that every page can have the pixel firing. When it comes to analytics, Having the pixel everywhere will mean that you can pick up on everything, from where people are dropping off, viewing and buying, all with a view of improving the customer journey. Now don't think about that too much for now though. We'll dive deeper into analytics later on down the course. So like I said, once the pixel's up and running, we can start tracking the actions that matter most to your business. So you'll then see a list of events with toggle icons next to them, and there are nine in total. Purchase, lead, Complete registration, add payment info, add to basket, add to wish list, initiate checkout, search, and finally view content. Once you've established which event you want to set up, you'll have two options either track event on page load or track event on inline action. You see, this will allow you to specify exactly when the pixel fires, either when someone lands on a certain page or if they click on something specific on a page. After that, You'll also be able to add event parameters, like conversion value or currency, which will help you measure additional information about your event. Facebook gives you the option to add other parameters, 
such as content ID, content type, or basket contents. This is especially relevant for e-commerce businesses. Now once all that is established, you should copy the specific event code and paste it into the relevant page of your site. This is where you need to be careful. You need to make sure that you don't modify the previous pixel code embedded into the header of your website. We'd recommend that you use the official Facebook plugin for WordPress for the header tag and the SoGo Add Script Header Footer plugin for page specific tags. Now the extension I mentioned briefly earlier is the Facebook Pixel Helper, a troubleshooting tool that basically checks to see that your pixels are all firing correctly. To install it, just go into the Chrome Web Store, search for Facebook Pixel Helper, click the plus add to Chrome button, then add extension. To use it, all you need to do is go over to your site, go onto a page that should have a pixel working, and click the pixel helper icon in the address bar. If everything has gone according to plan, you'll see that the pop-up is displaying the pixels installed on the page, and what kind of event they're tracking. For now, the main events that you should focus on are the lead event, view content event, and the purchase event. Lead event will be the option you choose if you're offering a lead magnet and looking to generate leads. View content will be the event that you use if you're specifically trying to get people to view the great content that you've produced. And purchase event, finally, will be the event that fires when people purchase what you have. For example, if you're an e-commerce store. What's great is that more and more platforms are offering full pixel support. Shopify, one of the world's largest e-commerce platforms, offers Facebook Pixel integration, meaning that all you'll need to do is enter your Facebook Pixel ID in online store, preferences, in Facebook Pixel ID, and finally just click save. It's even simpler than copying and pasting it for it to go live. To check if it's been added correctly, you can check your active pixels back on Facebook. From the main pixel page, you'll be able to take a look at everything that's happened on a page and what actions have been taken. What's more, the Pixel Helper Chrome extension will let you see which events are being tracked. Just go to the Pixel section of Facebook and you'll be able to see all of the data recorded in a clear, easy to read table. You'll be able to find information like dates and devices, as well as which actions were performed. There's a whole host of even more great features that you can take advantage of. However, a lot of them can get quite technical, which is why I've not gone over them right now. If you want to use these advanced matching features, just head over to sites like Upwork and Fiverr, where you'll be able to find freelance web support. They'll do the hard work in just seconds and help you out no end, just for a few dollars. So, you'll be glad to hear that that's it for the Facebook Pixel. I just hope I've made it totally clear how important this beautiful little piece of code is. It's going to form the basis of all the marketing that you're going to be doing on Facebook. Now, if you're unsure about anything at all, go through all the steps I described again. It's essential that you get this running so that you can make the most out of your business on Facebook. Now, I know that that was a lot of technical information. The thing is, all of this is crucial for the success of your campaigns on Facebook and for your business. If it's too technical, well, you can always reach out to a freelance web developer who can help you out. What they might find super simple will really help your campaigns out no end.